nicest car is the most honest car you ever see. It's been a dream ever since I've had it. The first time I heard that engine screaming, I thought, I gotta have one of those. For me, the cars have personality. What's great about a BMW Classic is the community that surrounds it. When you listen to that, <laughs> that's why we're here. Welcome to Classic Heart, the BMW Group Classic Podcast. My name is JP. And you remember maybe that we last episode with uh, Matt Schwartz, we spoke about the Festival of Speed in Goodwood. And now I'm actually in Goodwood. And I can tell you the Festival of Speed is really a celebration of everything that moves somehow. No matter if it's a combustion engine, if it's powered by hydrogen, electric, whatever, everything that is quick, fast, loud, not loud, is celebrated here. And the Duke of Richmond has founded this one as a celebration for friends. And uh, this became really, really massive. I don't know how many people are around me at the moment, but I think it will be going into the hundred thousands. And it would not be the Festival of Speed if not BMW Group Classic would also be present. And uh, I spoke about hydrogen in the beginning, and they have brought a very, very interesting car. They brought the record BMW H2R. This thing looks like a little bit out of another world. I mean, it looks so futuristic still and uh, powered by a V12 engine, but not with petrol, hydrogen. And the sound is absolutely fabulous. And it's Marcus Flash who is uh, driving the car up the hill. And uh, we hope that we can have some chat with him about doing so. So we're working on that as well. So you see many, many, many cool things happening here at the Festival of Speed. If you like to read more about the Festival of Speed, of course, you can visit Classic Driver and BMW Group Classic. We will add some information in our show notes that you have a full recap of what has happened at the Festival of Speed. And now I think it's time that we finally introduce you to our guest today, Mackenzie Ebers from the United States. Mackenzie, I'm talking to you from this event, the Festival of Speed. What's up next for you? Well, my next trip in just about two weeks is heading up to um, Burlington, Vermont. It's about a 10 hour drive from where I live, um, and we'll be attending a um, all Euro show, which is so fun up there. It's Vermont is beautiful. It's perfect setting, you know, out on the grass. Um, and I'll be bringing my E30, trailering it all the way up there. So always an adventure <laughs> when you're traveling that far with a truck and trailer and all the things. So very excited. <laughs> That sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, how do you choose the shows you're going to or you're visiting? Are there as many Eurocar shows as I would assume uh, in the US or how do you choose? There are actually quite a few. So for the most part, you find out about them like on social media. You know, people are just talking about, oh, you know, I'm looking forward to this show. And I love that the East Coast particularly is very connected in that, you know, we're traveling all the way up north for shows. You know, we also travel to Florida for shows or we travel to the south, you know, traveling to Georgia and Tennessee and and all of our other friends who live in other areas, too, are also traveling for those shows. And so it's a really fun dynamic, I think, maybe uh, um, kind of unique to the East Coast in that way is that, you know, you have all these different people who are traveling to all these shows and, you know, seeing each other and you're reunited, you know, in that place for that weekend. Um, I think primarily we're choosing kind of what you would say more quote unquote stance shows. Yeah. Um, but there have been a couple, you know, some classic shows um, we did when we lived in Washington, did go to Monterey Car Week. Um, and Legends of the Autobahn was so much fun. Yeah, Legends of the Autobahn, um, so cool. Oh, it was, that is one of my favorites. But the East Coast does have an event called the Vintage, which is similar to that. Um, all classic BMWs, you know, in a field in the mountains of North Carolina. And so we traveled to that back in May. So definitely quite a bit of traveling going on. <laughs> Don't want to miss anything. <laughs> quite a full Most schedule, definitely. I would say. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yes. 
But how did it all start? Mackenzie, you told me you don't have any background with classic cars, neither your husband. Only 10 years ago, you suddenly fell in love with classic BMWs. How did that all happen? I think that the allure comes from my love of old things. Mm -hmm. I've always, you know, been interested just in like 70s and 80s culture, music from that time period, the styles, you know, and even branching not just from cars, but, you know, fashion. I love old homes, just really. So I've kind of always been that way. And so that really fun, retro, classic, boxy look of the E30, yeah. I think just something about it without even really knowing anything about them at the time just really struck with me. And him too, he was like, oh, yeah, we should <laughs> definitely get one of those. So... <laughs> Just one of those funny things where it just kind of fell into my lap in a way and, you know, been going downhill or uphill, whatever you want to call it from there yes. with buying more of them. So so what is the actual status of number of cars in the Abbas household? So we have our two main E30s. They're both um, 89, 325Is. Mm -hmm. We also have... My 1988 528E, that is my daily driver. Um, his daily driver is a 1985 735i. And we also have a 1971 2002. And a couple of other Project E30s that are sitting around not running right now. So... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> you as it goes. <laughs> yeah, Mackenzie. Seriously, um, I mean, you can't have any other hobbies then, uh, <laughs> with, with maintaining all that cars. Um, oh, you are not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so You're not um, wrong. <laughs> you spoke about like you like old things. So what is yes. the fascination of old things? I think I love that these old things, you know, that, like I said, whether that's a house, a car, an old camera, whatever it might be. I love that they had a whole life before me. I think that's so fun. And there's just something about it that there's been, you know, many other people who have enjoyed this item and they've had their own memories with it. And so just one of those things where, you know, if cars could talk, you know, what would they what would they say? And I, so I love the history piece that comes with old cars. And I love that they really have a, a personality. You know, we, right now, of course, we have four E30s, okay, but they are all different. They all have their little quirks and different little things that they do. And I just, I love that about old cars. And the 2002 is very, very special. Mm -hmm. And the story with that car is that we did buy it from the original owners. Like they, from the first owners? Yes. Okay, they wow. bought. They did um, European delivery. They picked mm -hmm. it up in 1971 for their, it was their wedding gift to themselves. Sweet. And so they ordered it, you went and picked it up. And then they spent, I believe about the next six to eight months touring all over Europe in the 2002. Wow. And, you know, just documented their trip. Of course, they have their map where they drew out their route. They took their slide photos that I have had the pleasure of seeing quite a few. And it's just wonderful to be able to actually see the whole history. And I, you know, especially on a 52 year old now car, that is pretty rare. So, you know, after they spent their months touring, they put the car on a cruise ship and... It traveled with them from Germany through the Panama Canal and around to Seattle, Washington, where they then lived for the next 40 some years and enjoyed it and, you know, took it to shows and, you know, all the little things. They daily drove it. And I mean, yeah. it just like just amazing. So I think in that sense, I love that I have that story with it. Yes. So was that a very emotional sale as well? Or was it like, okay, they did their piece with giving it away? Oh, yes. It was very emotional. Um, 
They really didn't want to sell it, but they were at the point where, you know, they are getting on in years and were looking to downsize. So they took it to a car show and they just have their little sign for sale. And my only criteria for 2002 was that it had to be Colorado orange. That is like my absolute favorite color. So I see this, I see the for sale sign. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. You know, and we, so we start talking to the owners and they could tell how excited I was particularly, but just they could tell of our, I think our real, you know, love and passion for the cars and I think that they they you know they told us that they felt good about selling mm. it to us, even though they didn't really want to yeah. sell it, but they felt they felt good. So, <laughs> you know, I think if, if you listen to us, lovely couple that sold the car to Mackenzie, it is in very very good hands. So I I can assure you because if you look at the Instagram, you see there's a lot of love, especially for BMWs. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so you, you in the beginning you you said that you like more in terms of you're interested in like the design of the eighties and uh, is that because that's and I try to be very polite now uh, is that the is that because you're far too young to experience the eighties? Yes, far a little too young, born yeah. in the nineties. <laughs> of course, obviously. Yes, so for sure. <laughs> So what is the fascination uh, from even a period you haven't never experienced when it was real, in a sense? Right. Well, and I think, and we can kind of say like 70s, 80s. Would okay. Be. I, yes, you know, we have so, to include the 2002, yeah, obviously. Right, because the, se- the 70s, there is just something I love about the colors that were popular. Orange, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, the colors and just the fashion was so fun and playful and you could really see that that translated into automobile culture as well there were these you know fun vehicles and fun colors and you know architecture of that time was interesting and so mm. i think from you know i am also um a creative person who loves to design and and things like that and so i think that really kind of you know tugs to me something something about it i just find so fascinating um yeah uh and now a random question that might be but let me uh, later on explain where it leads to are there any pets around your house so me and my husband are both very allergic to like particularly dogs and cats. So we had not had any pets or anything. However, about a year ago, this little kitty started coming around and, you know, obviously looked like maybe she'd been abandoned or something. And so, of course, we had to start feeding her. And now she's absolutely our pet. So <laughs> but nice. she mostly lives outside. <laughs> yeah. We're still so allergic, but okay. there, yes. <laughs> Very good. So the perfect fit. <laughs> so now the question why I'm asking is actually because I was wondering if there's a connection for those who might not have pets, but taking care of something. Uh, do you see a relation between having a pet or having a car if you really love your car? Absolutely. I always joke that the cars are like our children slash pets, you know, and that because we don't have children. And so I always joke that they are and they keep us plenty busy that (laughs) I don't need to add anything else. (laughs) So I yes, I am so attached to all of them that they are definitely like my little pets. Yeah. (laughs) Mackenzie, your cars are not necessarily in delivery setup, if I may say so. Not anymore. <laughs> and not anymore. So what does it mean to you? First of all, let's speak about the personalization and the yes. creativity you put around the car. So what did you change on your uh, E30? So my E30 just, you know, and to back up from when we you know, were first chatting about the E30s, I originally got it because my husband had his And I said, okay, this is, I love this car. This is so much fun. I want my own. And so, um, you know, went out and started searching for one and found this car and just completely stock, never a modification done, but it had just been fully repainted. You know, I think 
just a few months before I got it. So it looked just beautiful. I mean, it's just beautiful. And I, you know, I remember we drove it home and I give it like its first bath, you know, and <laughs> cleaning it all up yes. and everything. What you do. And, yep. And I just had this kind of moment where I was like, I think this car is really special. And it was just kind of a funny, just a funny thing. And then I have always, I'm definitely have I I think a diverse interest within cars because on one hand, I love a really stock, clean, you know, OEM example. I love that. But then on the flip side, I love a highly modified car. Um, Okay. And that was, you know, that is what my E30 is for sure. She, and I, I say she because her name is Penny. So on okay. my, on Welcome my Instagram, Penny to the conversation. Yep. <laughs> I always, she is, that is Penny. You know, if you know me and you know, I say Penny, you'll know who I'm talking about yes. <laughs> in my car. Um, and the modification of Penny really was a creative outlet for me yeah. where I had this vision in my mind where I really wanted the car to be on bags so that I could air it out. I wanted this very perfect, you know, tight fitment. Fenders are going to be sitting on the lips of the wheels um, and just wanted that very sleek, simple, but modified look. And I'm so proud of how far that car has come because it is exactly what I wanted. So beautiful. And so, you know, starting with doing the air ride, um, sourcing the wheels. And one of the things that is so special and why they're my favorite piece is because the wheel hardware is plated in actual 18 karat rose gold. And <laughs> that was one of my things where I I said, I want it, you know, it cannot be copper. This needs yeah. to be real rose gold, <laughs> you know. And so, you know, sourcing those wheels and then just doing some, you know, small, subtle, you know, adding side skirts, adding, you know, this little thing, you know, doing your you know, wood grain steering wheel, wood grain shift knob, um, and just those kind of small, subtle modifications that maybe you wouldn't even notice if you didn't know. But that's very much my speed. I love to, you know, make it look Oh, it still looks old and looks correct, but it's, a, you know, a modification has been done. I, I love that. And then to come along, you know, a few years later was the our whole um, engine bay modification that has been done. And what... Um, so just could you ch- share with what have you done to the engine bay? Yes. So what my goal was for the engine bay is I wanted it to be something that was going to be a little bit different, um, but also that very visually appealing, you know, a simple, clean look. And so what I really wanted um, were, was to do ITBs, which mm-hmm. are the um, individual throttle bodies, yeah, and have just your, your polished stacks on there, no air box or anything like that to kind of shield them off. Um, and so that combined with a, you know, shaving the engine bay, deleting just about every accessory that we possibly could, no AC, no power steering, you know, nothing like that. So, you know, just really making that that really, you know, simple, clean look. Um, however, I love the fact that, you know, I have kept the original heart in that car you know and that's that is the original engine in there i mean that makes total sense and i think like customization is like as old as the car industry um i mean the design of the e30 is uh, a a chap called klaus luther he did also things like the nsu and uh, prince and uh, raw 80 which are like completely crazy cars from the 70s would you think that they would like like the design of that who created it would love what you guys doing. I've now had my E30 for nine years this year wow. and it has been modified in that way for about seven years. So, it, you know, I've had it going to shows for quite some time, but what has always been the funny conversation is people, they say, wow, you know, I never 
thought I would like this. You know, I never thought I would like it so stanced. You have it so low. I usually don't like cars like this, but I think I like your car. And so that's why I'm, I always hope. I'm, yeah. I say I hope the you know creators of the E30 they would say, you know, I maybe wouldn't think I would like. I like her car. Yeah. <laughs> Mackenzie, we also need to speak about two. So that would be the 2002, exactly. which I generally refer to as the two. <laughs> yes. I mean, I love that one. Yes. It's the only single one who is two. Yes, exactly. She, yes. Okay. Technically, I think we made her name because we wanted to give, you know, give them all like an actual name. I think we technically named her Isabel, but that didn't really stick. And yeah. so it's the two or Toodle is the other one that has toodle. come around. I love that one. <laughs> so we'll call her the Toodle as well. So, <laughs> I mean, yes. we met her briefly because you said that what you you shared with us the wonderful uh, story about the way you found the car and that it was first owners. They travel Europe, going back via Panama Channel, uh, then to the US, yes. staying with them forty years. So, um, what makes two beside that lovely story? Is there any additional thing that makes two very special to you or oh, Isabel? Yes. <laughs> two formerly known, no, Isabel formerly known as two. Yes. <laughs> well, I think that I love that car because it is so fun and it is so simple just to drive and be in. Um, I actually drove it to work yesterday and I just was having the best time. Um, I love the simple simple driving experience where sure your steering's kind of heavy your gear shifts kind of heavy i mean i but i love that i love how you're really like in tune with the car you know you don't have any accessories you know nothing yeah but i love that and just i think driving a carbureted car you know up until the 2002 i had never driven a carbureted car before um, and I just love that punch when you get on the gas and you can hear the induction noise. And, you know, sure, that car has, I don't even know, maybe 100 horsepower, but it scoots along and it is just, yeah. it's just a blast. I mean, it's bringing a smile to my face talking about it. And every time we drive it, it just brings such a smile to your face. You can't not have a good time, I don't think. <laughs> In a and how is the outside world reacting to two? Because I mean, it's very rare to see the small, tiny cars with this. Yes. I mean, every every Golf is now larger. Every Fiesta, whatever they, the the compact cars are, is now larger than than two. Uh, so, how's the reaction of people when you pass by or get out? Or, I mean, it is it is hilarious because we can hardly go to the gas station or go anywhere without someone coming up. And they it, telling their stories. And it is just, I mean, it's just the cutest thing because, you know, it's almost like people, they're having just their normal day, you know, whatever's going on. And they see the 2002, oh my gosh, brings back some memory. You know, it's my dad had one, my mom had one, my uncle, or this was my first car that I bought. You know, I've had five of these over my life. They're, um, they're pulling over to you know, tell me a story about how, you know, this man, he's stationed in Germany in the 70s and him and his friends are riding around in 2002 and just like, just the best stuff. I mean, it's never ending. I, I really love it. It's, it's just a fun, I think, unique, particularly to the 2002. Um, yeah. You know, people, of course, love to see the other cars and they'll, they'll say, wow, that's really cool. But it does not bring those nostalgic memories in the way the 2002 does. <laughs> Abs I'm, I could imagine. Yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> um, I'm surprised that, uh, no, I, actually it's not fair to say that, but normally would think that America is the uh, non-stick, non-shift car market. <laughs> so um, did, where did you learn to drive a stick? Well, when I was 16, my dad tried to teach me how to drive a stick. And at the time, I was just not having it. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes when it's like your, your parent trying to teach you something and then it just stresses you out too much. So I gave up at that time. And then my um, E28 that I daily drive yeah. originally was an automatic. 
And that was fine, you know, whatever. And then we were on our way to a car show. It was a very hot day. And suddenly the car starts slipping in and out of gear. And we're about three hours from home at this point. I have our friends in the car with us. And guess what? That automatic transmission went out. And so that prompted us then, you know, we were like, okay, we're obviously not going to go ahead and put another auto into it. We're going to manual swap it. So, you know, went ahead and did that. And then I said, okay, well, this is my daily car. I better make sure I can now drive my daily car. (laughs) So I had no choice but to, you know, face it. And you're just, oh my gosh, you know, this is, we lived in Seattle at the time too. It's very hilly in Seattle. So doing the hill starts was terrifying. I was so scared to do a hill start. I mean, it's still for me, seriously. (laughs) Yes. Then I had no choice. And then, you know, been um, daily driving that car since then. So I just daily drive a manual car, which is super fun. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, definitely um, more unusual for the U.S. <laughs> absolutely, because I, mean, I I remember friends of my parents. I mean, now friends of my parents who ages ago, and uh, he always was he was American. He always drove a stick and left the car open in Washington D.C. And I, I remember that my father was asking, "Do you don't lock the car?" I thought, no one can steal it. It's a it's a shift. It's a stick. No so, one can drive it. <laughs> uh, do you think you will like, or did it already happen? Uh, did two get the McKenzie treatment or? So because of the history with that car and just how, you know, special the story is and how special the car is, because those previous owners just kept it completely OEM, you know, no modifications other than just putting a different air filter on. Um, I want to keep it as much like that as possible, you know, with the exception of maybe some fun little um, BBS RSs on there too, because that's kind of my shtick, you know. <laughs> um, you know, maybe put those on there. We have some side draft carburetors that think about putting on. So just like some little things. I don't want to do too much. Usually I would be like, oh, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to do all these things. But, oh, she she's just so special. So I don't. I would feel a little bad, I think, in this for that car. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's fair to say that with that very particular story, Isabella, formerly known as Two, or the other yeah. way around, Two, formerly known as Isabella, deserves only slight, uh, yes. a slight yes. m- McKenzie nation, I would say. Yes, <laughs> I would agree Wait. with that. Um, did you ever drive in the in Europe? I have been to Europe several times. And when me and my husband got married in 2018, we actually made our honeymoon in Europe for about three weeks. And we did visit BMW Classic. And that was, you know, what goes without saying that was my absolute highlight. Yeah. And I believe, is it Ben? Benny? Ben? Benny Foss, yes. Yes. Big kudos to Benny. He is the yes. mastermind of connecting the global world, the BMW uh, Group yes. Classic. And he was just so wonderful. He um, took us back, gave us a tour, was giving us yeah. all these really fun, you know, historical bits on all the cars. Of course, I love all, you know, these weird color combination, all this stuff. Yes. And, you know, just had the best time, you know, doing that for the day. Um, so, and I've always, so, every, you know, I Loved BMW Classic before that, but then getting to actually go see the facilities, see, you know, the collection that was there at that time. That's why, like, this opportunity is even that much more special because, you know, five years later, um, you know, I feel so honored to, you know, be able to be a part of it as well, just because I love you guys. So (laughs) I I love it. That's very nice. And now we can do a big favor to Benny. So everyone who wants to visit the BMW Group Classic, Benny is sure doing some tours. Not. No, because he has a different other job. I mean, uh, so don't take us too serious. It's just a joke. And uh, Benny will uh, be just have been shocked by listening to this because he just see his Instagram and email uh, mailbox flowing over from request. Yeah. No, so Oops, please. Maybe don't put that in. <laughs> exactly. Please don't do this. It was just a joke to shock Benny. Uh, Mackenzie, before we come to the end of our conversation, I would like to start a sentence 
and you finish the sentence, okay? Okay. <laughs> a perfect Sunday to me is driving to... Driving to go get a coffee from one of our favorite coffee shops. Yes. And then taking your coffee in hand down to the beach, you know, sitting on the beach, enjoying the afternoon, um, and then heading home and probably tinkering around with the cars in the yard is pretty much my favorite day. <laughs> and that Perfect. does happen all the time. So <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish for you that it will happen very often, actually. So the next one is, it's not right that Virginia is not a car paradise because. Yeah, I, w I mean, Virginia is definitely good for cars if you're in particularly the Washington, D.C. area. Um, if you're here, the roads are really bad. <laughs> it's not the best <laughs> for driving. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, Mr. So, Mr. or Mrs. Yeah. Governor of Virginia, you have a <laughs> yeah, dedicated uh, voter. <laughs> so it's, yes, I, Seattle was a very good place for classic cars. This part of Virginia, maybe not so much. So usually we have to travel a little bit to get some, <laughs> Got it. Get some good um, activities going on with other people. <laughs> so My favorite beach in Norfolk is? is going to the ocean front which would be on so the ocean side um that is my absolute favorite um mackenzie unfortunately we have to come to an end it's horrible it is but this has been so much fun though <laughs> likewise mackenzie and um for all those who would like to learn more about mackenzie's bmws you should follow her instagram You will find all the information in our show notes, as well as mentioned in the beginning, all the info and the recap of this year's Goodwood Festival of Speed. And as always, we as the whole team of the Classic Heart Podcast would highly appreciate if you leave us a five-star rating and do not forget to subscribe. So everyone, thank you. And uh, Mackenzie, especially thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>